and I found the lid, the exact lid. Oh, there's Penny being a nuisance. Hey, get down. Shake up a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifting. This is Mid-Century Wasting. again welcome back this is mid-century wasted thank you so much for watching and joining me again today I am going to do kind of an interesting estate sale haul this was an online estate auction instead of having estate sales where you go into the home and do shopping they do their own online auctions this was my first one and what I ended up buying were two lots of essentially all Pyrex. At this time, I, oh look, I didn't have really any Pyrex myself. I wasn't collecting it yet. Oh look, there's some more right there too. There's another one right behind me. Yeah, I didn't have those yet. This was a while ago. I actually filmed the haul video, which I'm going to cut to next, a couple of months ago. So a lot has changed since then. All I had up until this point was kind of see it right there my grandma's fetus bowl as it's known or the salad bowl it's kind of just a specialty pattern a one-time thing she was getting rid of it at a garage sale she was getting rid of a lot of stuff and I saw that she was thinking about putting that out on the table she was probably gonna sell it for a buck so I snagged it from her she gave it to me of course so that was kind of the start of me getting into Pyrex. Now I knew already about Pyrex, I just didn't have any myself. I knew enough to stop her from selling it. So it kind of launched me into Pyrex collecting, at least being more interested in it. And of course, because turquoise is my color, that's what I'm interested in, is mostly the turquoise ones. And I've also been kind of coming across interesting ones with different patterns and pretty lids on top. Anyway, I'm getting off track again. Trying to make this video shorter. Ugh, that first one was way too long. Anyway, I wanted to start flipping some Pyrex because I started looking into it and I knew that the pink, um, gooseberry, the pink gooseberry was basically the most collectible one and except for, you know, certain just one-off patterns where they're super rare. In general, the pink gooseberry seems to be the most valuable, the most collectible. Um, and then the the turquoise butterprint, which is the one that I would want, or just even the solid turquoise color bowls are a close second. Obviously I got them there right there. It's really hard to see. They're back there. So I'll show you the haul video. Because this was a few months ago when I filmed this, I'm gonna cut back here and I'll talk about what has sold and how much profit I have made. And I am in the black on this set here. I am not in the red anymore, even including the ones that I have kept for myself, which is really good. So enjoy this quick little video of me talking about Pyrex and then I will meet you back right here. Okay, first of all, I was kind of obsessed with getting some Pyrex. Obsessed with finding some. And I can never find it at the thrift stores around here. Like, it's just gone in like two seconds. I know the pink is super collectible, and don't hate me for saying this, but I'm just not really a pink person. So, this is all gonna be for sale. Not that pretty turquoise in the back, because I am a turquoise person. But all this pink, I'm gonna sell it. Here's a pink scroll casserole dish. No lid, wah wah. But, I mean still really nice and pretty. I mean, I like that one better than, what is this? What do they call it? Gooseberry? Something like that. Just only two lids for this set of three, which is, you know, whatever. It happens. I'm sure it just broke at some point. And then we're mix missing the, let's see, this is 441, 442. We're missing the 443. So it's three out of the four Cinderella bowls. They're in good condition. I mean, they're dirty. Whoosh. That'll, that'll clean off. I'll shine them up real pretty. They do have some, ooh. Yeah. I mean, they're not the greatest condition ever. I mean, I've definitely seen worse. Like all of the 
pink is on there. I think it'll just look a lot better when I clean them. These, just three of the turquoise bowls. These are, I cleaned this little one already. You can tell, like, it's still a little scuffed up. Maybe not quite as shiny as it used to be. But, oh my god, I love turquoise so much. I was just really happy to get these. Even if they're not perfect. They're, these ones are for me. For sure, 100,000%. I'm keeping those. But I don't have a china hutch or a china cabinet, so... Right now they're living on my computer desk, which is not great. I'm in the market for a china hutch. I mean, obviously I'm trying to like hold out for a mid-century one. And my budget is like $4. So yeah, that's why I don't have one right now. This lot also came with just like some, oh my God, Jamie, stop doing that. Basic kind of dishes. This was funny. There was one of those handled handle ones, right? Handle casserole dishes. Two glass lids and one of the plastic. Grab it? Grab it. That's what these were called. One of the plastic lids. So whoever gets this is going to have two extra lids for that thing. And then that's this is the pie. Pie dish. Oh, there was one more thing. Hold that thought. Okay. So this milk glass pitcher also was included in this lot. I almost forgot. And I don't collect milk glass. I don't really know very much about it. I did look this up and it took me a while to find it. I had to search for like cameo milk glass pitcher ribbons or something. I forget what I searched, but I did finally find it. And now of course I've forgotten. I've forgotten what it is, but I'll look it up again. And, you know, put it right here. And this does have chip right there, right on the underside. Ooh, I know it's blurry, but right there, there's a chip. Big chunk is missing from it. I didn't know what this was supposed to look like, and so at first I didn't even notice it. I just thought it had a flat, flat bottom to that little scroll piece right there. It's a nice picture. It's pretty. I'll try to sell it. And I'm going to sell all of this Pyrex. Now, I am terrified of shipping this. Beautiful, pink, desirable collectible Pyrex. So if anybody watching this has tips on how to package this and ship it so that it absolutely positively will not break no matter what happens, please share that information with me because <laughs> I really like, I would be heartbroken if I shipped this to somebody and it came in like pieces. I just really want to make sure that I package it really well. And then yeah, the turquoise is mine. Mine, 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 mine. The funny thing is I now have actually found like two pieces of Pyrex in the thrift store ever since I got this. So maybe it's lucky. It's a lucky start to my collection. Oh yeah, and I forgot to say it was about $90 I think for all of this. And some of you may be like, <gasps> gasp, clutching my pearls. But those three back there are mine. The way it evens out in my brain, whatever I sell these for just deducts from what I paid for those. Now, of course I wouldn't have paid 90 something dollars for those three bowls. Maybe like I don't know, 20, 30. So sell these for all this for like 70, then I break even in my mind. So I think, I think I'll be okay. I'll let you know when it sells. We'll see. All right. That's it for this little mini haul. Bye for now. Okay. So as you can see, overall, this Pyrex haul was a learning experience and I went into it with that idea that I would kind of test the waters and see how I do selling Pyrex. It was two lots actually. The pink was all together in its own lot and then the turquoise bowls, the milk glass pitcher, and all of the clear kind of random pieces of Pyrex, that was a separate lot. The pink butter print lot was in the $70 range and the turquoise with the other random pieces I paid about $25 for. So when you look at the turquoise lot it by itself, if I was just keeping those three turquoise bowls, I would pay $25 for those bowls. They're actually in pretty decent condition. They had some scuffs and things, but I used peak on them and barkeeper's friend and cleaned them right up and they're really they're really pretty nice they're nice enough for me i'm not interested in mint condition collectible versions of anything where i'm gonna be afraid to use it because i like using all of my dishes i don't want to be devastated if something happens to one of them 
kind of want to be hundreds of dollars in. Some people do, some people don't mind that. They want them to just, you know, stack in a china cabinet and be on display and look pretty and to each his own, that's fine with me. But I like to use all my stuff, so I almost prefer stuff that's got a little bit of life, a little bit of wear in it, um, just so that I don't feel like I have to baby them when I use them. But anyway, so let's talk about what has sold. Now, I listed all of the pink butter print rather quickly, and almost all of it sold rather quickly, very quickly. I listed it all on eBay, and I believe, I'm looking down at my notes here about what sold and the prices. I believe I accepted a best offer for almost all of it. We'll start with the pink scroll casserole dish. That was missing the lid. It was missing the cradle that it goes in. The pattern, the scroll itself was in really good shape. The pink was overall in really good shape, but the corners and the edges of it were just decimated. Just like the pink was just, my cat's messing with something right now. The pink was just completely worn off basically. It was not in as good of shape as I originally thought when I made that haul video. You know, once I was photographing everything f for the listings, that's when I was really inspecting it. I cleaned it all, I washed it all. I used a little bit of peak in certain areas to take any scuff marks off but for the most part I didn't want to go crazy with it because I didn't want to ruin them or take any paint off at all or make them worse somehow so I did kind of minimal cleaning I just washed them really good and then any black scuff marks I cleaned those off with peak and then that's when I was really noticing the condition of these that's my cat here's the thing with this online auction they don't take pictures the way you would take pictures for eBay. Selling them to somebody who's going to collect them, you take detailed pictures so that people can know the condition. Well, this is kind of a middleman. I think they know they're selling to resellers. So they just take some quick pictures and list that stuff on there and then whatever people buy it for, they buy it for. So it was really hard to tell the condition of these. Based on the picture, I just assumed, because I was new to all of this, that the condition was gonna be great. But some of the pieces were not great condition. Some of the pieces were excellent condition. It was kind of just a little hit and miss overall. Now the pink scroll casserole dish was in, it, it was really kind of weird. It was in beautiful shape along the pattern, but then the edges were in horrible shape. So I don't know, is fair shape a, a good way to describe it? I don't know. In my listings, I backlight the Pyrex. I want you to see it held up to a light so you can see every little ding and nick of paint loss, every little scratch. If there's a chip, I'm gonna zoom in on the chip. I would like to be very, very, very transparent in my listings about the condition. I don't want to kind of be like, oh yeah, it's in great condition. There's a few scuffs here and there. And then for somebody to buy it for way too much money and then receive it at home and be like, what the hell did I just buy? This is a piece of crap. I want people to know if this is in only fair condition, this is why. And for some people it might be good enough and they would be willing to pay a little bit less for it. It's not like it's not gonna sell. It'll sell eventually, it just depends on what it's gonna sell for. And I'm not trying to get more money out of something than it's worth. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. And I would rather be just really honest in my listings. As a collector, I have purchased things where you receive it and you you look at it and it doesn't seem to be as good as you thought it was. You go back and you look at the pictures and then you notice, oh yeah, they had it turned a certain way when they took the picture to make sure that the flaw or the whatever was kind of hidden. Or they didn't point it out, they didn't even mention it in the listing that it's got whatever is wrong with it. And I don't want to do that. I just want people to know that when they buy something from me, they know exactly what they're getting and if it's not in perfect condition, my prices are going to reflect that. I'm not going to try to make you pay $75 for something that's super beat up. And that's what some of those pink scroll casserole dishes go for. When you look on eBay, you can look at the sold listings and see what things are actually selling for. Looking at the not sold listings doesn't really tell you anything because people can try to sell it for whatever they want to but it doesn't mean it's gonna sell for that price. So I always look at the sold listings and that pink scroll casserole dish does sell in very good condition with the lid with the cradle and all that for you know upwards of 75 to 100 dollars sometimes even more than that on weird rare occasions. Mine sold for 29 dollars 
and that's because I was honest about its condition. It was really beat up on the, the corners. But if somebody really wanted that for their collection, it's gonna sit in a shelf, or even if they want to be using it and they don't care if it's a little bit beat up, it was perfectly fine. I would have one just like that. If I collected pink Pyrex, I would have one like that in my cabinet without even batting an eyelash. You know, it just depends on what people are looking for. If you want to bargain on a pink scroll Pyrex casserole dish, then find one that's a little bit beat up. So yeah, that one, that one sold for $29 plus shipping. When I say $29, that means that was the price and then plus shipping on top of that. Etsy is a little different now because you kind of have to include free shipping. So you have to hike up the price of the item. I'll get into that into another video. That's a whole can of worms that everybody's losing their minds over right now. Anyway, so pink scroll sold for $29 plus shipping. And then there was those three little casserole dishes with the glass lids. Now I was missing one of the lids and I listed it originally with just two lids. And I thought, you know, big deal. You see that all the time. People always come across other lids or they can find somebody selling just a lid on eBay and complete the set whenever they want. Um, then I think maybe like that very day that I listed it, I was at a Goodwill and I found the lid, the exact lid. Oh, there's Penny being a nuisance. Hey, get down. What are you doing, darling little angel? Get down. <sighs> Cat people, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I found one of the lids and I was like, okay, well that's just meant to be. It was 99 cents at Goodwill, so I bought it. Came home, took some new pictures with the, with the third lid on it and updated the listing. I didn't change the price or anything because it cost me an extra 99 cents, it's no big deal. And it should have all the lids and I was able to change the listing to say that it had all the lids now. So that was awesome. That set sold bundled with the Pink Gooseberry Cinderella Bowl 441, the smallest of the Cinderella Bowl for Cinderella Bowl set. Somebody bought both of those and I accepted the best offer for that, $70 for the casserole dishes and $10 for the Cinderella Bowl. It, that's just kind of how it broke down. Basically, I accepted $80 for all of it together. Plus shipping, I felt like I did really well on those. The casserole dishes and the Cinderella Bowl were all in really, really good condition. They just had a few tiny little like tiny flea bites is what they call it in the Pyrex world, flea bites, tiny little dots of paint loss, but overall just very, very good. Oh, and the, the lids, a couple of the glass lids had some chips in it. But again, the glass lids aren't even really that important because you can always find those glass lids all over the place. I'm like at Goodwill for 99 cents, like I said. So whatever. So those sold pretty well. I was really happy with that sale. Lastly, out of the pink Pyrex was the Cinderella Bowl 442. That one sold for actually $35 by itself. And again, that one was in really good shape. And I think that's what I had it listed for. I did auctions on these. I don't know if I have figured out the benefit between doing auction versus buy it now because I don't ever start an auction for less than what I want to get for it or what I will be happy to get for it. Even though I have accepted some best offers that are a little bit lower, I feel like you might as well set the auction price and then maybe it'll go up higher than you expect. But if you set it at buy it now, it's definitely not gonna go higher than you expect. So I don't really see the point of doing buy it now unless it's something that you know definitely sells for a certain price all the time. This thing sells for $20 over and over and over and over again. So I'll just list it at $20. In that case, sure. But something like the Pink Pyrex, I don't know, you never know. Sometimes those things just like skyrocket and go nuts. But so far, none of the things that I have sold have gotten into any kind of bidding wars. Nobody's bidding things up. It's just either somebody offering a price maybe a little bit lower than what I was asking and then I just accept it or somebody just bidding once and nobody else bidding and then they end up winning the auction. Whatever, it's fine. It's it's still all a big experiment for me, like I said. What has not sold? Those turquoise bowls because they're not for sale because they're mine. If I were to look up the value of those, you know, let's just say that selling all the pink ones more than paid for those and I have some profit. 
let's put it that way. And and like I said in the video, I would pay between probably 20 and $30 for those. They do sell for a lot more than that, but that's about what I would pay if they were in not so great condition. That's about my limit of what I would ever pay for that. Now it is missing the biggest one of the set, so I am still kind of on the hunt for that, but I'm hoping to just find it out in the world at some point. Good luck with that, with the way Pyrex is like not even at thrift stores anymore. Maybe at a yard sale I'll find it someday. Okay, so what has not sold is actually the biggest of the pink gooseberry Cinderella bowls. Now you saw in the video, I held it up to the light to look exactly at the condition and you probably could kind of hear my voice. I was a little like, like, oh God, that's in a lot worse shape than I expected. And I was a little worried about all of the other ones when I did that because I hadn't really inspected them closely yet. That one is in the worst shape out of all of them. The other ones were in fair shape except for the scroll was probably the second worst beat up one. So that one has not sold yet. I keep coming down on the price and I think eventually it is going to sell. It's not in as terrible of shape as it may seem when you backlight it. When it's just sitting on a table it has a good side and a bad side. So if you have it on display you just turn the bad side towards the back and you're gonna be fine. There's a lot of paint loss, there's a lot of scratches, it's like a cat scratched on it and so the pink is coming off on one side pretty heavily. Um, the other side's in good shape, it's fine. So I think it'll still sell eventually. It's gonna be a bargain for anybody who is willing to take one that's a little bit just beat up, you know? But again, I would buy one that's beat up like that so that I can use it and not worry about it. We'll see, I'll just keep coming down on the price until it finally sells. It's still on eBay too. And then there's the clear mishmash of random clear Pyrex and that little grab it a casserole oven dish with the handle and all those different lids for some reason there's like a million lids for it and that set I just took a quick couple pictures and listed it on Facebook marketplace for super cheap and it hasn't sold and I'm probably gonna give it just a little bit more time and it's gonna end up getting pitched to the donate pile, um, which is kind of what I expected when I bought that. I looked at that stuff, I was like, if there's nothing in there that I wanna keep, I doubt I'm really gonna sell any of it because that's the kind of stuff, that's exactly the kind of stuff you see lining the shelves of the thrift stores <laughs> because people can't sell it, people donate it to the thrift stores. Ever since I got those and when I've gone to thrift stores since then, I notice it now, it's like everywhere there's this clear Pyrex you know, bakeware dishes. I'm like, okay, well, mine are gonna end up on these shelves pretty soon too. Which is fine because at my savers, when you donate something, you get a 20% off coupon. So I guess the value of those will be 20% off of something else that I buy later on, whatever. And then the last thing that has not sold yet that I have listed on eBay is that milk glass pitcher with the cameo on it. I didn't do a ton of research on it because that kind of stuff just honestly does not interest me very much. It's very pretty. It's in good shape except for like the chunk missing out of the bottom of the handle. I've seen some sell on eBay. I have mine listed very low because I just want to get rid of it basically and it does have that big chunk missing out of it. Um, if it takes too much longer that one's probably going to get donated too just because it's not something that interests me personally. I don't really want it for my own collection. I don't care about milk glass really at all not at all but you know some people collect that kind of stuff and it is pretty and I have it priced very low for what it is and for what it sells for so we'll see I'll give it a little bit more time like I said um, it is summer and I've heard from a lot of people that it's slow right now like sales are slow so maybe I'll get it through the winter and then if it doesn't sell like you know, the Christmas rush, which is still kind of like far away. But yeah, it's gonna end up getting donated too. We'll just see how long I feel like hanging on to it for. I can always lower the price even more and then maybe somebody will buy it. Um, okay, so let's talk money. Right now, adding everything up, it was $98.20, counting the bowls that I'm keeping. So the net profits, I'm really anal retentive when it comes to my accounting. So I track what I paid for it at the thrift store or estate sale or whatever, listing fees, what it sold for, my shipping costs, what they paid me for shipping, any specific packing materials that I need for that one item. And then overall, big picture, I tally everything up and then I also subtract all of my general tape and shipping supplies, right? In this particular set, in this bundle, right now I am in the black $36.16. Doesn't sound amazing, but if you 
don't count the turquoise bowls, that lot, that was another $25. So I'm actually up like $61, $62 if you don't count that, if you're just talking about the pink gooseberry that I have sold. I do still have three listings that may or may not sell, could make another 30 bucks on all of that, possibly 40 if it, everything sold for what I have it listed for right now, which I'm gonna start coming down on prices on those things. So it's, it's not bad. What I have learned, lesson learned, is to maybe not pay so much sight unseen on in these online estate sales because you can't see the details of condition very well. So when it's something where condition really matters a lot, kind of like Pyrex, just assume the condition is poor and figure out what you're gonna sell it for if it's in poor condition or if it can be sold in poor condition. Unless there's details showing this is something that's in great condition, then fine, pay up for it. So this was a good experiment for me. It was a good dipping my toe into the Pyrex world. I am, like I said, you can see all of it back there. I am starting to get a little obsessed with it. I definitely am always looking for the turquoise stuff or just kind of the unique things. I do like the yellow and the blues. That's all I have really is the yellows and the blues right now. Oh, and I do have down below in my cabinet in the cupboards. I've got some Christmas like snowflake pattern Pyrex too, which I really love. Christmas time, you guys, you gotta be subscribed to my channel around Christmas time because I'm gonna be going nuts. I have so much Christmas stuff just squirreled away that I haven't listed in my stores yet. Like I'm gonna have to deactivate all my listings and just turn it into a Christmas shop because I have so much Christmas stuff. Anyway, that's my experiment. I feel like I did okay. I'm in the black at least. I didn't lose my ass on this $90 up front haul of Pyrex, which was pretty crazy now that I think about it and now that I know more of what I'm doing. I'm at least in the black and not everything has sold yet. Hopefully everything will sell and once it does I'll be making 50 to 75 dollars about on this on this haul. Like complete profit counting all my eBay fees and everything. So not awful, not great. Hopefully I'll do better next time. Just gonna have to subscribe and follow and see how I do with other things, right? Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button so that you see my other videos. Like this video, comment, share, tell your friends, that whole YouTube-y thing that YouTubers say. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.